Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. On today's show, we're fishing one of the numerous small ponds that can be found throughout Ontario. With the help of our still water expert, Phil Rowley, we'll be discussing still water techniques that will make you successful in any other small body of water that can be found in North America. Get ready to take notes, we'll be right back. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis, Ontario, yours to discover, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Trout, no fooling. In Ontario, there's literally thousands of small ponds to be found throughout the province. Some are public and some are private. But with a little research and permission from landowners if needed, these can be real hot spots for fish. Pond fish are usually more willing to take your fly offering as competition among the fish is great. The nice thing is you are usually alone when you fish them. I think he's, uh, I think he's digging into the mud here. Going into the weeds. I have 4X tippet on here, but I... Uh, Forex tip it. Churn through a lot of weeds. Bill, you wanna net that for me? They're all good. Yeah. <laughs> They're all good. And the hook fell out and look at that. Hold it up for the camera for us there, John. That's a great little trout. Yeah. Quality fish in anybody's mind. Like I say, do a little research and you'll find these little ponds dotted all through the province and have this kind of fishing in it. Oh, and away he goes. Oh, away he goes. Joining me today is friend and rod builder John Babulik. Listen as John talks about how important stealth is. Well, ideally you have to stay low, especially when these trout are cruising the banks uh, in the early morning they can pick up a lot of motion and, uh, and, uh, and see you from a long way off. So what I like to do is stand a little bit back from the edge and give them an opportunity to, uh, to come to me. Um, and I just, mostly I just try and stay low so that they can, uh, um, they don't have to, uh, um, they don't spot me on the horizon. I try to wear darker clothes or clothes that ma match the background or use, uh, use the sun at my back or, or uh, even uh, some brushes to hide behind if there are any. Now, John, you tell me that uh, these fish last spring were pretty small. Now, that was a decent fish in anybody's mind. Yeah, they, Why do you think that this happens like this? They went in in May, um, early May, as uh, one pounders, 13 or 14 inches. And it's August now, and, and the pond itself just, although there's no bait fish, it just seems to generate a massive amount of bug life. Yeah, and like There's a ton of leeches in here. 
Oh, okay. So uh, a small leech pattern might work too, just uh, dragging that along. And uh, in the other one that's that's kind of interesting about this pond is that there's a, there's a massive number of salamanders in it. Salamanders. Oh. Well, thus, we've seen yeah, a snake yeah. earlier, so there, there's prime food for him. That's for but sure. But that was on a hex nymph, so you do have hexagenias in here. So there's got to be a mud bottom somewhere because they're burrow, burrowing type of mayflies. Absolutely. There's a big mud bank that seems to support a lot of the burrowing type of mayflies. And then these rocky shorelines seem to support um, um, bugs more typical to almost trout streams, and like caddis and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. It's a good mixed bag. Yeah. Well, boy, that, that, that was a great fish. Liked <laughs> it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, we're pleased with the, the productivity of the pond thus far. Oh, that's great. Yep. There are two basic retrieves that we used. One is a strip retrieve. The speed can be varied to give the fly action. We use this when fishing leech patterns. The second is a slow weave retrieve that is used when fishing scuds or coronamids. This retrieve is meant to be dead slow. When fighting a fish in a pond, keep the rod high and use the rod's shock absorption to ensure your tip it doesn't break. There are two methods of line control when fighting a fish. In this case, the fish is not all that big, and all you need to do is strip the line under your finger. This, however, is not what you want to do if you're fighting a big fish. You must get the line on the reel as fast as you can, all the while being conscious of what the fish is doing as you fight it. Fighting the fish in quickly and the use of a soft, no-knot mesh in your landing net will increase the survival rate of a released fish. This, this end of the pond, there's a mud flat, relatively shallow, probably with the depth of the pond right now, it's uh, seven to 10 feet deep. It punches out and there's a hole that starts about where your cast ended and, uh, and, and swings right around and then off this point. And this point does have a little bit of a gravel lip that they'll, they'll move back and forth and feed in the shallows here, but then they'll also slide back and forth off that lip. Whether you're fishing in a bass pond or a trout pond, you must be versatile at all times. Changing tactics on a regular basis can be very rewarding. While dry fly fishing is the most fun, fish spend 90% of their time eating subsurface. A slow retrieve leech proved successful this time. Okay, John, now the morning mist is, is burned off. The dry flies have stopped. Now we're gonna have to change our tactics and we're gonna go subsurface now. Now the stealth still remains the same. So we're, we're gonna split up and look for marauding fish. Now, where are we gonna be looking for them mainly? Well, as, uh, as the mist burns off, my feeling is that the trout move just slightly deeper. Right. Um, although they still work um, the breaks and the drop offs. Look, looking for cruising damselflies, right. hexes, uh, water boatmen, mm -hmm. any of the uh, any of sort of the core subsurface feed in in this pond. Certainly, there's a lot of it here from what we've seen today. Right. Um, there's no shortage of food, but they're big trout and they have big engines that need mm -hmm. to be fueled all day long. That's to right. Keep and them you going. can see we we've got some quality fish. Now I'm using the countdown method, which means is I figured that this fly is going to sink about three inches per second. So I'm gonna count it down maybe to 20 seconds and, and then start my slow retrieve. You got a hex 
nymph on there. And uh, oh no, you got the same. I'm sorry. I've I've I've, I've switched over you switched from the over. hex. You had a hex earlier, yeah. I had a hex earlier, and I've switched over to this uh, same sparkle type leech. And uh, I'm using about a nine foot leader and just letting it settle down, um, settle down to where the tip of the of the uh, the dry fly line starts to sink, and okay. then slowly inching it back. Okay. Uh, I figure that'll put me nine or ten feet down. Okay, well let's split up and, 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 and keep our low profile and see if we can produce a few more fish. Sounds good. Great, let's go. Up he comes. Good fish. Good fish. See? I'll get on you this way. Maybe I won't. And oh, 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 bring him back. He's almost. <laughs> Good size. Okay. Yeah. What do you think he is? How big? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, probably 18 anyways. Yeah. These highly fertile ponds, they they, they have great growth. No doubt about it. That is a decent fish in anybody's mind. Great. Let's revive him. Wonderful fish. When fishing still water, one of the knots that we use is called the Duncan loop. As you can see, it's a bit of a loop before the fly. It gives the fly extra action. Watch as Phil Rowley shows us how to tie this. What I'm going to show you now is my favorite knot for tying the fly on whenever I'm fly fishing still waters, the non-slip loop knot. To begin, I'm just using a piece of rope here so you can see. I'm just going to tie an overhand loop. About when you're tying, it's about two to three inches above the end of your tippet. Take your fly, in this case my thermometer, slide the tag end through the eye of the fly, take the tag end of the leader through the overhand loop and draw both the loop and tag end to pull it close to the fly. There's the size of your loop right there. The loop size can also be adjusted when the lot is tightened and by pulling on the main line here. I'm going to come up and grasp both my fly and the overhand loop and just like a traditional clinch knot, I'm going to go around four to six times, then back through my overhand loop, moisten with saliva, and the knot is drawn tight. And you can see when a fish strikes, once you trim this off, of course, when a fish strikes, the loop will not slam shut. Uh, stays open and you can see the undulation. Any kind of fly we use, whether it be a coronamid, leech, damsel, minnow pattern, this fly has the ability to move throughout the water. It's a great knot, very, very strong. That little added action can be just the difference some days. Give it a try. up.
What I'm going to put on right now is a uh, strike indicator that is specially made for still water. Watch as Phil Rowley explains exactly how these work and why they're important. I slid the indicator in the assembled position onto the leader. I have the black peg at the fly end of the leader. This tends to foul less when casting. I simply now disengage the black peg, pinch the back of the indicator so the monofilament can't move, push on it. This causes the leader to loop like so. And this peg pinches this loop between the indicator and itself. Now when the indicator is floating in the water and a fish grabs a fly and pulls it under, I lift, the indicator disengages, and we're free sliding, and we can fight the fish and hook fish in any depth of water because the indicator is not going to get in the way of landing the fish. It's a great thing to use, and every kit bag should have one. Indicator on, and a leech. This is probably the second or third time this fish has hit in this area. Wow, strong fish, strong fish. Now, all I was doing, as you can see, we got a ripple on top of the surface here, and I was just letting the, the strike indicator drift, and the, I have a, a leech on, and it's the same color as the leeches in here. Wow, and I'm gonna back up, John, and bring the fish to you, buddy. Great shot, oh man, I, you gotta love this. Definitely quality fish. Definitely quality fish. Great, thank you. Oh man. How's that? Isn't that? This is extremely enjoyable. I'm gonna make sure that he... Leave him in there for a bit until he really struggles to get free. And there he goes. Now, as everybody can see, there's a little bit of a chop on top of the water from the wind. This is perfect indicator weather. What you want is the dead drift, your leech with the indicator, and that little bit of chop going up and down moves your leech in a natural fashion. This is how I took that last fish. And I know Phil Rowley, our still water expert, would be just proud of me. Today's pattern is the sparkle leech. Here's the ingredients you're gonna need. The hook, a Mustad R74-9672 in sizes 6 through 10. The thread is brown 8-aught or 6-aught. The tail is brown strung marabou mixed with a few strands of pearlescent super flash. The body is Stillwater Solutions crystal chenille and the bead is gold or copper. This fly can be tied in a variety of colors including black, maroon and various shades of olive. Now John, I've got a five weight rod here that's fairly stiff for pitching out lots of line because you, you know in a pond situation you gotta cast as far as you can anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, what would your recommendations be as far as weighted rod, wet weight rods and, and, and action? Uh, I prefer uh, slower action rods for throwing larger open loops that seem to uh, carry the indicator around for this kind of fishing. I, I like bamboo, I build my own fly rods so um, that adds to the enjoyment for me. Typically four and five weight lines are, are appropriate for this kind of fish. Yeah, well that last fish uh, is ind indicative of, of what you can catch here. Now, if the wind picks up, would you recommend going to a seven weight or a six weight? I think a six weight is, is all you'd really need. Most of the fish are in pretty close and, mm -hmm. and there isn't a lot of obstructions where you have to steer them out so you can take them. Right. So the more important is, is your cast, uh, being able to get the cast out there, present it properly, proper rod that you're not going to kill the fish. You don't want to be in here with a two or three weight, do you? Absolutely. Absolutely. The fastest you, the faster you can land the fish, particularly in the summer, the better chance they have right. of surviving the right. long term. So that's what you want. Four, five, six weight rods. You can go with bamboo. Nothing wrong with that. And what you want is open loops. So there's a recommendation we have. important to get that on the reel, isn't it? Looks like you got a decent fish there again. Feels like a strong one. A strong one, yeah. Now, we've been fishing this corner now because we got a bit of a breeze and it's pushing the fish this way. Yeah. Now they have brown leeches in here, so it's like match the hatch. Oh yeah, this is a decent fish. Let me get ready and I'll get my net wet. 
Look at it. Wow, wee. You weren't joking when you said you had some good fish in this pond, weren't you? Wow. Now this. <laughs> this is what it's all about. My goodness. Still water action for big rainbows. And the, fl and the fly fell right out. Thus, the importance of crushing your barb. I'll get him in a minute. Now. Try not to. Nice fish. Isn't that impressive? Still water techniques. Those type of fish, they make you shake, don't they? They sure do. <laughs> they bring on the adrenaline, make you shake. They sure and it do. just goes to show, slow retrieve with a, a brown leech. Now this one's got a little bit of sparkle in it. Slow retrieve, but I mean extremely slow. Yeah. Just dra dragging it across the top of the weeds. That's what you want to do. Again, and if something grabs it, lift up. You don't have to try to turn it inside out, just lift up. And again, that Duncan loop on the end of it there, that works real well and gives it extra action. Uh, I'll just, just check your knot and make sure that it's okay and we'll uh, continue that. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and learned something about still water on ponds. For more information on today's show and others in our series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis, Ontario, yours to discover, Islander Precision Fly Reels,